everybody and welcome into another video. So, uh, I'm Lord of Badger by the way, um, and I make videos. I haven't done for a little while because I've been having a few technical issues, I've been having a few health issues and things like that, and I'm now back to making videos. Um, now, I was recently editing a bunch of Warzone videos and realised that I was just making, like, oh, how nice we won videos, um, and realised this isn't the content I want to make with the current state of Warzone 2, you know what I mean? <sighs> I, I used to make like loadout videos, I used to make challenge videos and things like that, but I think that personally with the current state of the game, uh, making loadout videos just isn't hitting the same mark because, you know what I mean, there are some games where you just don't get a loadout, there are some games where um, it's just it just doesn't happen because of the way that the loadout drop now and things like that. Um, challenge videos, yet again, it's too difficult to find the guns that you need, you know what I mean, to kind of do that and, and so on. Now, what I decided to do was, is I had a thought about what kind of video I wanted to make. And that's when I started to think about, well, I'm talking about how I don't want to make these videos at this current state of Warzone, and thought about, well, what are the differences between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2? Now, I didn't want to make a video just on what my personal thoughts are because, uh, I mean, I'm very I'm very pragmatic in terms of the fact that I'll understand I am not a pro-level player. So what I say necessarily isn't, like, what high-level content should be saying. Um, but I'm also not a casual player. I play way too many hours and put way too many time into playing the game to say that I'm a casual player, so I'm not. I'm kind of in a mid-ground. So my views might not be relevant to everybody and that's the reason why I started to go out and find out um, in terms of this. So I asked a few of my friends and I've asked a few others and things like that about what their thoughts were. Now, my friends who I play with do fall under kind of different categories. Some are casual, who really don't, you know what I mean, play very often. Um, and some are like myself, who play quite a large amount of the time, but um, wouldn't necessarily consider themselves as, yet again, pro-level players. Now, there are a few friends I've got as well, who I did also question them about it as well, who stopped playing Warzone 1 near the end, just because they, they didn't enjoy it anymore. Came back to, to Warzone 2 to play it, but only played for maybe a week or so, and have actually found more enjoyment in the multiplayer or more enjoyment in DMZ. So I questioned this as well about what, what options, you know what I mean, and what, and what are the reasons. Now, the kind of two, they do fall under two categories, which is what I started to think about. And the two categories that I'm going to put forward is pre-season two and after season two, okay? Um, so some of the ones that I was given are such things as looting and the loot system, overpowered metas or quick TTK, movement while trying to play it, uh, the ability to stack self reses, kill streaks, etc., and late game regain is just way too hard. Okay, now some uh, like, most of these are going to be addressed in some way um, in season two, and the dev team have put out the patch notes um, to some degree in regards to what we're going to be seeing in season two. Now things are going to be addressed such as the looting system they're going to go back to the old spew system where it would spew up onto the ground instead of it being like a like a you know what i mean inventory system that you have to go into um we're going to be able to play it and burst through doors i am going to come back to that in a sec um, about that point uh backpacks will only come in small sizes meaning that there will be some limiting to carrying multiple self reses etc and that all players will start with a three plate um, they are also apparently going to address the economy uh, to make regains easier. Um, so finding money piles will have more money in it and things like that. Now, a lot of these changes that they have spoke about in the patches, I believe are going to fundamentally change the way that the game plays and will improve the overall um, quality of the game, in my opinion. But there is a few things that either the patch notes aren't talking about or... The devs, I just feel, are being very vague, okay? So to break this down further, we're going to go back to overpowered metas and quick TTKs to, to start off with. In the patch notes, we've been promised that weapon balancing, which on paper say, sounds amazing, but it's just not enough information. Nothing is spoke about increasing the TTK, and balancing, in my, eyes, in, my, in my mind, only speaks instead about keeping it as it is and just making the guns more evenly spread in terms of power. I mean, that is massively needed. I mean, I mean, come on, we've all been killed by an RPK and a Fennec now. But this shouldn't be waiting till the end of the season to happen. 
in terms of the balancing. If we have a broken meta come out, then it should be addressed quickly instead of waiting until the end of this season. Right? We can all remember at least one of the nightmare metas that happened in Warzone 1, whether it's a DMR, Origin 12, Hipfire, PPSH, or the Bruin. You know what I mean? That's just to name a couple of the ones that we've had. Now, why are we waiting until the end of the season to balance that? Okay. Um, why are we why are we not just dealing with it when when we know it be, starts to become an issue? Why are the devs not realizing that this gun is massively overtaking the way that it's working and is working too well? In my mind, I've always seen it that there is a, such a thing as a meta and then there's a broken meta. So we'll always have meta guns, okay? Um, it'll always happen. And that's just the way it is. Um, a gun will always, one gun will always slightly outperform another in a certain aspect. That could be it's easier recoil to control on a, on a controller than it is on a mouse. So therefore, that's better for controllers, you know what I mean, like controller players, than it is over mouse players. But what happens is, is we find that these metas, the ones that become the nightmares, are what I refer to as broken metas, because they are so broken of a gun that they overperform everything else without shadow of a doubt and that's what currently the rpk and the fenix really doing they are just so good in the areas that they're good that it becomes impossible to not play with them um so i do think that the balancing needs to start happening more proactively but then we also need as i said the ttk has not been spoke about about being increased so i'm a bit hesitant about season two and that and those avenues the next thing we move on to is the movement while plating point mm. now this does also link with ttk okay um in my mind at least because when they first said they were getting rid of the movement and slide cancelling, I was I was happy about it. You know what I mean? It was a broken mechanic, and yes, I I learned it, and I and I and I started to put a lot of time and effort into getting better at the whole breaking camera angles, and you know what I mean, like jumping around corners, peekers advantage, and and things like that. And slide cancelling was part of the of, of a mechanic. And if you didn't understand it as a casual player, you would you would just do slide cancelling for no reason. You'd be running across a map and you would see it. From time to time, you would you would spectate players and you'd see them doing it. Running across, like, Warzone 1, and they were just slide, 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 slide. And it was actually meaning that they were actually slower running than they were actually moving faster than what proper slide cancelling is. And that was a skill gap issue, which, you know what I mean, is another matter in its, in its own right. Um, understanding of the actual movement mechanic. But... That's not my point. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on my point though, which is that we had slide cancelling taken away, so a lot of the movement options have been removed, which is fantastic and is great. And they said about that they wanted gunfights to be proper gunfights again, but then we have this TTK that is so quick that what it actually ends up meaning is is that you're unable to to get away or or react before being destroyed. Now imagine like this is the situation, so you get in a gunfight. Yeah, pew, 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 shots are exchanged. Now, you manage to survive the initial encounter, but the other person is better off than you. So your options are either A, play it and walk away because you can't run at the moment, or B, run away and play it in a second. Now, everyone's tried both of them options, and sometimes it works, and sometimes you get destroyed by that player who jumps around a corner and uses biggest advantage against you. Now, what they're talking about in the patch notes is that they've... they've They've put it down as their ability to play it and burst through a door. Now, at the moment, to be able to burst through a door, you have to be in running it action. Now, that brings up a question, though, of if that's what they're leading up to, why are they being vague about it? Why not just say you can run and play it? Why, why be vague about what you can and can't do with the plating? Are we going to see that just while we're plating and walking, we can still shoulder through doors? Is that what's going to end up coming? Which, to be honest, isn't going to help too much. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not. You know what I mean? I mean, with the balancing, it may it may come be better off, but I'm hesitant as well on this point. Um, now, the next point we're going to come back to is stacking self reses and kill streaks. Okay, so the patch notes state that they try and handle this. They're going to reduce the bag sizes. So basically, you're not going to be able to find a medium or a large anymore, which was really rare anyway. Um, and you couldn't pick up other people's, which was insane, that it was there on the ground and I couldn't have it. That you're only going to start with a small and that's going to be it. 
Now, that is going to bring some form of restriction in the ability to stack multiple self reses. You're not going to come across a player who's got 10 self reses and things like that, or 10 airstrikes in the, in the final circles. But that does that not just seem lazy? Does that not just seem a ridiculous way to address the issue? Why not just alter the backpacks to have a similar inventory that you, that you already have? So you can hold one extra self res, you can hold one extra kill streak, etc., etc., etc. To me, it seems like they're just putting a band-aid on uh, a problem mechanic and they're just striving too hard to keep it at what it is and give you that freedom, but don't want you to have the freedom, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? They're trying their best to keep a mechanic that might not work in here, but might be amaz amazing for DMZ um, and just do it with a minimal amount of work. You know what I mean? Now, the next point I'm going to come on to is late game, regain, um, <laughs> late game regain even is just too hard. I cannot speak today. Um, now, according to the patch notes, they're going to increase the money that you win by winning Gulag. Okay, I, I can legitimately say I have never returned from the Gulag with more money than I went into the Gulag with. So I have no idea if that's supposed, if they've just worded that wrong, and that's actually supposed to be a new mechanic, or it's just broken at the moment, or it's always been broken. I don't know. But the Gulag will apparently start having money now instead of lootables, which just makes it seem like it's going to be something like out of the crystal maze. You know, the remember that money thing at the end, the money crystal, where they'd go into it and try and catch money? Like, it just feels like that's what you're going to do to try and come back from the gulag with as much money, right? But, I mean, once you factor in that money that you're going to start getting from there and the fact that you're going to be coming back automatically with a three plate, it does make it sound good on paper. But the issue is going to come back to the looting system that I didn't mention in this kind of breakdown so far, which is the new spew system, means that things are not going to be setting, sitting in like an inventory. So currently at the moment, if a bag is on the floor, the bag necessarily doesn't despawn for ages, um, or if it, even if it does, while it's still got things inside of it. If you take everything out of the bag, the bag disappears and it's on the ground, but then will de um, like decay and, 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 and leave the, you know what I mean, and despawn. Now, what that means that technically means that, that later game there might not be any loot to find. You know what I mean? And you're just gonna struggle to find anything, which means you have to land at a buy station, which, is most likely being camped so yeah it's going to be a good time um so now that's just the kind of bits about the points i was given by my friends and things like that about the issues and the reasons why they're like necessarily like moving away from it and as i said quite a few of them are being handled by pre-season uh, well by by season two now, a few of the things, though, that aren't being talked about, the patch notes, and that are as, like, effectively the other elephants in the room, okay, um, is things like one-shot snipers, okay? Now, everyone pretty much talks about or mentions about one-shot snipers. Now, I love a good snipe, and I virtually everyone I know loves to pick up a sniper and use them. Now, I, to be honest, I don't think we're going to see a return of a one-shot sniper, especially with the introduction now of a three-plate from the get-go. Now, I'm completely fine if they do bring back a one-shot sniper, or they don't. At the end of the day, if they don't bring back a one-shot sniper, but they do increase the TTK in Season 2, then I'm fine with that. If we have it so that it is a bit more of a gunfight, and therefore that's why snipers have like two shots, then I'm fine with that, you know what I mean? Like, there's not a problem. My issue with the whole sniper situation is why when I shoot someone out of the sky and they fall 300 meters to the ground, how can they be rezzed? Where's the fall damage? You know what I mean? Like It's now so hard, so insanely hard to hit those amazing snipes and guarantee that you're going to get the down and actually get someone out of the air. But to then know that that person like 300, 400 meters away is going to get rezzed by their team because they've survived the fall. I think either way, if we keep the if we if we keep it as it is and we increase the TTK, it'll be amazing. But bring back the fall damage, please. You know what I mean? Why have we not got that? Now, the next point I thought of was buy stations. You know what I mean? It's another point that's not been mentioned. We still haven't got any word about portable buy stations or the or normalizing what's in them. Yes, they've increased the, the loadouts now to be infinite, you know what I mean? So you can buy as many as you want instead of just one from the loadout and um, from the buy station. But why doesn't every buy station have like a munitions box? You know what I mean? And an armor box. Like, why why do I have to go to specific buy stations and hope? 
Um, you know what I mean? Especially with the idea that a lot of people now are camping buy stations. If we had portable buy stations and normality of what's in a buy station, the camping of them would be pointless because if you go and find a portable one, there's no guarantee that someone's going to come to that, you know what I mean, buy station. Um, and have it set on like a, a drop rate based off the um, like the radius from a buy station. So if you're very close to a buy station, the chances of you finding a portable buy station, very rare. If you're 500 meters away from every buy station, which sometimes happens when you land at the top of Almazra and there's no buy station until you hit like, you know what I mean, the marshlands and things, um, that you have a higher chance of hitting it. You know what I mean? Surely they can do something by based on a radius of the buy stations. I don't know though. I'm not a game developer. So a lot of these points I just talked about what I think would be a good idea. Now, the last point is, as well, is, this is my own personal opinion, this one, because nobody seems to agree with me when I say this one, is I think the next big issue is communal loadouts, right? I think, personally, this is a major issue in my eyes, and I would like to see a return to personal loadout drops for the free ones that drop closer to your team. Um, too many people now are hitting the, the communal loadout and then camping them, waiting for people to drop at the communal loadouts just to rack up free kills. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I sat by this by this loadout all game, but I racked up 14 kills. Like, 12 of them came from that loadout, and then two were in the final circles. Like, it's things like that we're seeing as well now because it's a much easier way to get them. And yes, it used to happen with personal loadouts, but it's less of a reason to hard watch a personal loadout on the off chance that that team hasn't already got it than a communal loadout that you know for a fine fact teams are going to go to. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are the points that I've kind of thought about and so far today just had a bit of like a kind of thing about. Now, overall, I know it sounds like I'm picking a lot of faults at the game. Overall, I'm massively enjoying it. Warzone 2 has been fantastic. Um, I think the map is beautiful and I think the gameplay can be amazing. Um, I just hope that season two amends and, and fixes some of the things that are personally driving me away from wanting to play in season one. Um, and I just hope that I can see them getting everything right in the future. But what I hope though is, is that the COD community effectively lasts until then. You know what I mean? We uh, The COD community have been very well known for being very vocal in their kind of opposition of things. Like every time we had a map change or any big changes, it's 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 been a negative um, take on by the community. So I hope that it, by the time they get it right, everyone's still with us. Um, this has just been a few points and things that I think, you know what I mean, would be nice changes in viewpoints of like the patch notes and everything like that. I mean, if you have enjoyed the video, Please remember to hit the subscribe button, the like button, you know what I mean, show some support to the channel. I am going to have a think about what other videos I can do or anything like that um, and what we can talk about. If you do have any thoughts or anything like that, just hit them down below in the comments. But apart from that, I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.